GC2, and uh, we're on worksheet 5. There are 10 of these guys. It's amazing. It's a huge uh, objective. This is all things about chords, and chords are fairly new to you. You're probably walking into geometry, thought a chord was something to do with music and not about geometry, but uh, chords are about geometry. And uh, I'm going to kind of teach you the concept and do an informal, quick little proof of why it works for you. So the first thing that uh, we find out about chords is if two chords are equal. So if if um, if A B is congruent to C D, A B congruent to C D, then the arc sitting underneath them is congruent as well. So arc A B would be congruent to arc C D. It makes sense, doesn't it? If they have the same length, they're taking up the same arc sitting underneath them. We can't just take it at face value though. Let's go over and find out why that would be. If I take those two congruent chords and make a triangle with the center, the center, uh, of course, makes radii. That All of these new lines I've just drawn are all radii of that circle. And so this triangle has three sides, two of them are triple dashes, one double. This one also has three two, double, two triple dashes and one double dash, which is a congruence of side, side, side. They are identical, which means, guess what, that their central angles would be the same, which means their arcs underneath those same central angles would be the same. Now one thing I'll tell you about this is that the converse works both ways. In other words, if you know that the, the arcs are congruent or equal, then the chords are. And if the chords are, then the arcs are. Now I find that this is a super easy idea until we get to doing some of the problems. We'll, we'll help you with that, but I'm just trying to get the big ideas first. The next thing they say is if you take the perpendicular uh, bisector, so these would be equal, the perpendicular bisector, or what, actually let's think about this. Uh, no, let's do it this way. Let's back up just a step, we're going to do it this way. What this basically says is if a diameter or a radius hit at 90 degrees. We're then to know that it, it hits at exactly the midpoint. So the question is, so if it hits perpendicular, then we find out it's the midpoint. So if we start with the perpendicular idea, is that enough to make sure that that has to be 90 degrees? Let's come over to my little proof here. So this guy comes down, hits at 90 degrees. Notice what I did, I closed off the two triangles. That is a trick for the ages. That happens all over this worksheet. Close off those triangles with radii, it's easy. Now when you use this line, it's a radius. When you use this line, it's a radius. This little side is a common side. So once again, I can prove that this and this are congruent by HL, hypotenuse leg. I have a 90 degree angle, I have the hypotenuse and one leg, the hypotenuse and one leg. Guess what? Those two guys are congruent, which means that this little length and this little length must be equal or congruent. So there it is. If I strike at 90 degrees perpendicular, I guarantee a midpoint. Now, the converse is also true. If we knew that this was a midpoint, you and I could prove that that has to be a right angle. And we would do the same thing. What we would do, let's quickly do that. What we would do is if we knew that they were equal this time, we want to show that it has to be perpendicular, guess what we would do? We would prove 
that the triangles are congruent, which is easy. Side, 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 side. They're congruent. These are equal. They add to 180. They have to be 90 each. So like this one, the converse and, and the original statement work, both of them. Here, also, if you knew it hit at a midpoint, you would also know that that's 90 degrees. Those things are connected to each other every time. The last relationship to know about is if they are the, the chords are the same distance from the center. So if that chord CD is the same distance that AB is from the center, then the two have to be the same size. I also think that that makes sense just in a natural way that if you are the same distance away from the center, you are the same amount of chord. But the same thing happens here, what you would do is if you knew that they were the same distance, they hit at 90, guess what? If they hit at 90, they hit at a midpoint, so these would be the same, these would be the same. Uh, the radii are all the same, so everybody matches up side, 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 everybody is exactly the same triangle, therefore they are the exact same total chord length. Let me quickly run through the relationships. Equal chords means equal arcs. Equal arcs mean equal chords. If a diameter or a radius strikes a chord at 90 degrees, it's hitting the midpoint. If it's going through a midpoint, it's hitting at 90 degrees. If you're the same distance away from the center, you are congruent chords. If you're congruent chords, you are the same distance from the center. Now those three things play out in lots of different ways and I'll try and show you a couple of those really quickly here. That's the big idea about chords. I know I did this pretty extensively here on the board but I want to show you with the technology because it kind of, I don't know, makes it real simple. So remember how we said if the um, chords are the same, if these two chords are, are the same, given that they are, that the arcs underneath them are equal. And actually, it's kind of fun to watch this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that guy where it once was, and I can't do this on the board, and swing it down, and you can see it makes sense, right? If the chords are physically the same size, then the amount of arc underneath them have to be equal and vice versa if the chord or the arcs are equal then the chords must be so that's just a nice visual um, remember this one that said if it hits at the chord perpendicular then it's uh, a midpoint and so uh, we could pick these two points and measure those measure that distance and then if we grab these two points and measure that distance guess what uh, yes they're equal Going the other way, if they, if it's a midpoint, which this is, then it says this must be a right angle. So I could just select these three points. Oops. Select the three points. And it should, uh, when I measure that angle, come out to be 90. Bam, it is. So again, it works the forward or converse. If perpendicular, it's a midpoint. If it's a midpoint, there's a perpendicular there. And the last one is if they're equidistant from the center, then these two chords... Uh, let's get their names, chords A, B, and C, D, must be equal. And uh, this is also one of those nice things I could just swing it around and say, oh, that makes total sense. If they're the same distance away, then they must exactly be the same chord. Just some visual connections for you.